Good afternoon. Thank you all for being here. Um, I uh, want to express uh, uh, my, uh, my great appreciation for uh, people coming out here and, and for the presentation that we've just heard, which was remarkably articulate uh, and really brings home to us some of the, the peculiarities of the situation uh, of, of the Irvine 11, uh, the ways in which uh, the, this, this set of problems was addressed uh, by the university and by uh, the district attorney's office in Orange County, uh, I find deeply troubling uh, as an academic and, and as an activist and someone who has worked on uh, these particular issues uh, now for three decades. Uh, these are fraught questions. They're difficult questions in all sorts of ways. Difficult questions not only about the substance of what we disagree about as a, an academic community, uh, but uh, also uh, d d disagreement about how we disagree as an academic community. Um, I come here to, to give no easy answers, to give no bumper sticker answers to difficult questions, uh, but rather to express how concerned I am about the way in which uh, the, this particular form of protest was responded to by authorities uh, in this particular instance. Uh, the idea of law enforcement coming onto campus uh, and engaging in this extraordinary level of investigation, uh, an extraordinary level of overcharging, conspiracy to commit a misdemeanor. I really just scratch my head at that one. I never actually heard of that. Um, the, the, the idea that one would reach so far uh, to try to address uh, uh, what is really a, a kind of local academic question, uh, which is to say how we deal with fraught issues on our campus, uh, I think is intensely disturbing. Um, I also find disturbing the way in which uh, some of the, the discussion uh, about the, the form of the protest proceeded. And I want to say uh, uh, right now that I, I have very deep misgivings about the, the form that the protest took. Uh, I don't particularly want to defend uh, that particular set of tactics, uh, and I don't uh, uh, have a very clear sense, I'm, not, I'm a, a lawyer but not a First Amendment lawyer, um, I don't have a clear sense of exactly where the lines are uh, with respect to the exercise of prosecutorial discretion in this particular case. It's difficult to win appeals on questions of prosecutorial discretion, uh, and, and it seems to me that uh, the, the, the lawyers on both sides are going to have a lot to argue about uh, in terms of the legal questions that are at stake here. Uh, but I really want to talk about the way in which we discuss these sorts of issues, uh, because it seems to me that the, the notion of civility on campus uh, is a quite popular thing uh, to, to discuss nowadays. Uh, and one has to be on guard against the abuses uh, of the invocation of civility. There are things that we owe to one another in an academic community. And certainly one of the things that we owe to one another uh, is allowing audiences a fair chance to hear what's being presented to them on a campus. Uh, and we also have to recognize uh, that uh, where uh, there is a, a determined effort to try to breach a, a, an existing norm of civility within any kind of institution, uh, uh, whether they be legal norms uh, or, or merely uh, uh, locally uh, uh, prevalent norms uh, w within a particular community, that there are going to be certain levels of consequence for that. Um, but one also has to understand that civility um, is a, a kind of complicated notion. Uh, civility is, after all, making the, the, the statement at some level uh, that the people who are part of the discussion belong as part of the discussion, that they uh, have an appropriate place at the table and have, a, and have a specific place at the table that they have been given institutionally uh, to, to make uh, their position known. Um, and it's here, I think, that we find uh, that there's really a lot of complexity uh, to the idea of having uh, a Michael Oren come to campus in the wake of the Gaza war uh, and to be brought to campus not simply as the representative of a particular uh, a position on a fraught issue, uh, but being brought to campus as a celebrated figure, as someone that everyone should be honored to listen to, um, when in fact uh, Michael Oren was the spokesman uh, for a government that was engaged in practices uh, that are reasonably understood, uh, whether one agrees or disagrees with the charges, reasonably understood to entail very, very serious violations of international human rights and humanitarian law, uh, and indeed potentially international crimes. 
Uh, we are talking about a conflict uh, in which, uh, we could call it a war between Israel and Gaza. Uh, the war, such as it was, uh, led to 13 deaths on the Israeli side and 1,300 deaths on the Palestinian side. Uh, of the Palestinian deaths, even the most conservative uh, kinds of uh, estimates that have been made, the, the, the uh, estimates made by the Israeli government itself uh, say that a third of the deaths uh, were uh, of innocent civilians. Um, the, uh, the, the more likely uh, number from the standpoint of international human rights observers uh, is that at least two-thirds of the deaths were those of innocent civilians. And with respect to the, uh, the other third, uh, there are difficult factual and legal questions about whether uh, those people uh, fall into the civilian category or not. Uh, so we're talking about a very large loss of life uh, in a very extreme situation that was taking place at that time, uh, and a figure who was being celebrated uh, as someone who uh, was, was worthy of a kind of respect and adulation uh, from the audience. Now, People have a right to believe that about Michael Oren, and people have a right to be loyal to the cause that Michael Oren represents. Uh, but people also have a right to make clear uh, that they refuse to accept this notion uh, that a, a particular kind of apologism uh, for the sort of violence that was, in, was visited upon the people of Gaza uh, was something that, 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 that should be accepted uh, and, and you know, sort of uh, regarded as, as something in the ordinary course of politics in the ordinary course of things that we just happen to disagree about. Um, if we think about in instances in the past that might be analogous to this sort of thing, uh, imagine a situation in which in the late 1970s a representative of the Argentinian junta uh, gave a, a similar uh, kind of discussion on campus uh, and, and there would be a similar kind of disrupt disruption. Uh, I speak of the Argentinian junta because uh, th these people are in prison today uh, for the things that they did in the course uh, of, of those actions uh, taking place in the dirty war in, in Argentina. And so uh, it's, it's important to recognize, I think, uh, the extreme nature of the kinds of conflicts that we see in the world uh, and the kinds of moral outrage that people have, uh, whether they are right or wrong in their entire assessment of the circumstance, the legitimacy of their uh, wish to seek to deny the kind of uh, expression of regard and expression of respect uh, for the kind of talk being given. 